Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this is going to be a bit of a channel update video because my 7950X died during an overclocking livestream on the Twitch channel. And, well, I don't have a 7000 series CPU right now, so I'm going to have to probably buy a 7000 series CPU, which I really didn't want to do because I want to upgrade my oscilloscope, and oscilloscopes are expensive, and so... Yeah, um, anyway, let's, let's take a look at how it died. So basically all I did was just punch in some settings in the BIOS, saved and reset. And then I, and then I hit the retry button when the system didn't want to like get into windows and then the CPU never started again. All right. So just adjusting some settings, lowering the core, core voltage, because at the time, what I was doing on stream was trying to get a high score in Geekbench 3, um, and that was going pretty well. Um, I just need, like, I, at this point, I was basically just, like, dialing in memory, like, kind of dialing in the memory and also dialing in the CPU. At the, this point, the CPU was actually running a bit too hot for Geekbench 3, um, so I was lowering the CPU voltage. Um, save and reset. And it actually manages to complete this first, like, boot up sequence. Um, yeah, so at this point, like, we're actually going into Windows. And then it goes to 33, which this is the CPU temperature readout. And then it just kind of gets stuck on that, right? Like, it never gets to the Windows, like, splash screen. So what I end up doing eventually is I hit the retry button. Um, or maybe the reset button. I'm not sure. I, like, we can't see which button I, I, I pressed in the footage, and I can't remember which button it was. I think, actually, it might have been the reset button, because if I had hit the retry button, the board would have probably, like, the LEDs should have turned off. So I probably hit the reset button, not the retry. I eventually definitely hit the retry button, so we're going to see what the retry button looks like anyway, but this might have been the reset button. Okay, yeah, so, wait. Yeah, so later on I start hitting the reset, the, the actual retry button. And... Yeah, like, dead. So, that's how my 7950X died. I have no idea why it died. I had most of the CPU voltages set to auto. So, yeah, I've tried the CPU in other motherboards. I've tried, like, BIOS flashbacking the BIOS uh, on this board. I've not tried that on the other boards because the other boards always, wor like, worked. So now they don't. Like, the, the other boards basically just get stuck on a memory error, CPU error. I've tried different memory sticks. That doesn't make a difference. Um... And the gene gets stuck on zero, zero. And so, yeah, like, I can't get the chip to turn on in any of my motherboards. Um, and so I'd say it's pretty safe to say that the chip is dead. Um, and I, I don't know why. Like, I straight up have no idea why. Like, maybe the auto voltages were too high. Maybe the way the retry button is implemented is, like... Like, maybe it's not implemented properly and there's some kind of, like, power sequencing issue when you when you use it or something, which, like, that could do it. But the thing is, like, I was, I was, I don't have an oscilloscope hooked up to every single power rail on the system and I'm certainly not, like, monitoring them while I'm doing this, right? Because, like, why would, like, that, that's, that's paranoid behavior if, if you're doing that kind of thing, right? Like, that, that's the kind of thing that you should be doing if you're a validation, like, validating a design or something, not, not when you're just overclocking, like, that, that's insane. So, I didn't have any, like, monitoring hooked up to the, to the motherboard at the time, and, yeah, you know, hit the, the reset button, and then the retry button a few times, and, like, well, I think after the reset button, it went to zero, zero, and then, got stuck on zero 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 so yeah um so i have no idea why the cpu died it could have been like excessively high auto voltages it could have been a power sequencing issue it could have been unlucky like maybe this is you know like sometimes you get cpus and gpus that 
are defective from the factory, but they just barely manage to sneak past the the QA, uh, you know, the quality assurance, which is why there's general like at least in a lot of the in in a lot of countries in Europe at least. Um you have like a 14-day no questions asked return window on tech products because or even 30 I think it's even one month for for some some places. Um but that's basically because a lot of the time you get like you just sometimes get electronics that you know they've technically made it past QA when they really shouldn't have. Um, so I could have just gotten an unlucky CPU. Um, I, I don't think I punched in any voltages that were like excessively high. The only one I kind of have doubts about is that I had the 1.8 volt PLL rail raised to to two volts. Um, cause that was, a uh, like doing that on say 5,000 series significantly helps infinity fabric overclocking. Um, and I was kind of trying to push the infinity fabric as high as possible cause Geekbench 3 is very memory intensive. And so, um, or well, it's not intensive on the memory in terms of like load, but it, the score is heavily affected by memory performance. So like, it's not a very difficult benchmark to run, but it does care a lot about memory performance. So you want to run as high infinity fabric clock as possible. And so, you know, um, like, I don't know if that trick that works on 5000 series also works on 7000 series, but that's the, the whole point of a stream like this is that I was testing that kind of thing. And like, I don't think bumping a 1.8 volt rail to two volts would generally be concerning. Like that, that should kind of be within tolerance. Um, and I, like, I've already told, like, AMD and Asus that, like, this is what I did, and I didn't get any, like, you know, immediate, you shouldn't do that, that's definitely gonna kill the CPU response yet. Maybe they haven't, like, you know, really read, read through it just yet, but, um, so maybe, like, maybe I could have, like, maybe that, that did do, like, kill the CPU. The core voltage, I don't think, was the issue, because I was running level 5 LLC, which has quite a significant amount of V-droop. Um, like, that's also the LLC that Asus actually recommends that you use for overclocking on this board, so I don't think that was the issue. 1.4 volts is, like, yeah, it runs really hot, but it shouldn't be dangerous to the CPU. Um... Like, not in and of itself, and, like, the CPU died trying to get into Windows, which, like, it's not running hot trying to get into Windows, right? Like, we're not doing an all-core load. And, yeah, so, I I have no idea why it died. Um, at all, like, yeah. Which... Yeah, so I, I like straight up. Wh why did the CPU die? I have no idea. Literally zero. There is not like there is like like if any like I think it's probably far more likely that this was just a really unlucky chip than there being anything particularly wrong in what I did or what hardware I was using. Um. So. Yeah. And now the other issue is, of course, well, now I don't have a 7950X or any other 7000 series CPU. It looks like I won't be able to get a replacement 7950X. Um, it's like this isn't a retail chip, so... And actually, even if it was a retail chip, like, you're, you're not, like, overclocking your CPU at all. Like, enabling XMP... I'm not sure if AMD is better about this, but generally speaking, even just enabling XMP will void your warranty. So, yeah, and, and this wasn't a retail chip. This was a this was a sample CPU sent by AMD, and and yeah. So, um, if they don't have any more samples left to send out, then I, which it sounds like they don't, I'm I've like I'm I'm going to be buying a 7000 series. So I guess I'm kind of glad that I didn't rush out and buy a 7600X as soon as the 7950X arrived, which was, at one point, that was the plan. Um, because that does mean that now, you know, I could pretend, like, you know, I'm not gonna... <laughs> it, it, like, if I'm gonna run out and buy, like, if I'm gonna go and buy another 7950X, like, at least I'm not down also the price of a 7600X. Um, but this just sucks. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking, 
because the thing is, like, a 7950X is a lot of money. Um, at the same time, I also think it's kind of the most interesting CPU for the platform, because I am relatively certain that Intel 13th Gen for, like, a gaming CPU is just going to be way more cost-effective than, like, a 7600X or a 7700X, which is the whole reason why I've sort of been holding off on buying a 7600X. Because I really, like, I, I hate the, the, like, this is a really common situation for me where I have just, like, a ton of motherboards and one CPU for all of the motherboards. Uh, and I hate that situation because it just makes it, like, like, if I want to show memory overclocking, then it's like, well, I have one memory controller that I can show memory overclocking with. And if that memory controller is bad, well, then everything looks bad. Um, all of the motherboards look bad, all of the memory kits that I test with that CPU look worse than they actually are because the CPU sucks. And so, yeah, like, I always had plans to get a second 7000 series CPU. I was delaying the 7600X in hopes that the price of the 7600X would eventually come down a bit. Um, but now it looks like, you know, I might need a 7950X or a 7900X or, like, something, because I've still got boards that I haven't even turned on, and no CPU again. Um, like, I have a B650E Master here that, like, I was gonna test. Can't do that anymore, because the CPU's dead. Um, also an X670E Master... Um, I was also, plan like, thinking about maybe buying the B650 ITX board that ASRock has, because that looks kind of interesting to me. Um, so I was considering, like, testing that board. Um, but yeah, if I, I need to go buy a 7900X, well, then it's like... Or, or another 7950X, well, then it's like I'm not buying an ITX motherboard. Like, I also want to buy that oscilloscope, right? Um, so, yeah. Like, that's, that's the situation, like, yeah, so basically I don't have a 7000 series CPU right now, um, it looks very likely that I might have to buy one, which just, like, that, that does just kind of throw off some of the other plans that I, I sort of had. It's not a huge deal, because I was delaying that 7600X purchase. Um, it doesn't affect my 13th gen coverage, because I have, like, 13th gen is fine. Um, but, uh... Yeah, like, this... I don't have anything else to say, and I think, you know, the video is long enough as is. <laughs> so, I guess, sorry for wasting your time. Um, if you'd like to support what I do here with the channel, I do have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the Bandcamp, which, conveniently enough, you can see it right here. That's that's my, like, solo solo industrial noise project, so... Um, if you hate your ears, you might want to check that out. <laughs> it's not like when I say industrial noise, I mean industrial noise. Like this, it's not pleasant. <laughs> um, and there's also the Teespring store, um, where there's like shirts, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. So, yeah, that's that's it. I guess. Uh, Thanks for watching and goodbye.